You know, it's great to uh, be with older Christians that have uh, walked in the ways of God for years, but also <clears throat> that have understood the ways of the Holy Spirit. And uh, coming from a traditional background, um, it, was, uh, it took us a while to really understand who the Holy Spirit was, what he wanted to do in our lives, how he wanted to accomplish great things for us, for the glory of God. And so this morning I want to talk about the promised helper. Jesus has promised us a helper. I want you just to close your eyes for a moment and let's just pray God's blessing on his word. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that as we look at the importance of the person of the Holy Spirit, I pray that you'll open our understanding afresh <coughs> to who he is and how we can desire more of him in our lives. How we can desire him to take control of our lives how we can develop a walk of intimate relationship with Him. Holy Spirit, I pray that You'll stir the hearts of each one of us because I know it's the, the will of the Father and of Jesus, His Son, for us to get to know You, to learn to be instructed by You, to be guided and led by You. And Lord, I just pray for a blanket of anointing upon this place this morning. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You know, when you look at the life of Jesus, everything he did was out of that intimate relationship that he had with the Holy Spirit. He walked with the Holy Spirit. He talked with the Holy Spirit. He was so in tune. He didn't rely on the fact that he was God. The Bible says he emptied himself. He was totally in reliance on the Holy Spirit. And um, even his whole life, for instance, the Bible says that he was born of the Holy Spirit. Gabriel said to Mary that the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the one holy who is to be born will be called the Son of God. That shadow was the Holy Spirit Himself. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will overshadow us to birth in us something of the Kingdom of God. That will birth in us something of the dreams that God has purposed for this church. That we will see those dreams become reality. In His baptism, when he was baptised, the Father, the Bible says the heavens were opened. The Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. And John the Baptist was able to see that dove come upon Jesus Christ. In Isaiah 42 verse 1, it says, Behold my servant, I have put my spirit upon him. It was the spirit that led him into the wilderness. Listen, it was the Spirit that led him into the wilderness to be tested of the devil. Just because we're filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that we're going to be immune from the attacks of the enemy. In fact, the Holy Spirit may take us in the wilderness experiences. I don't know about you, but I've had a few wildernesses, wilderness experiences in my life. And it's not pleasant. And in those wilderness experiences... You do at times get attacked of the enemy. But after that experience with Jesus, the Bible says he came back to Galilee in the power, the dunamis of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes it takes a wilderness experience for us to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. He was filled with the Holy Spirit going into the wilderness, but he returned, the Bible says, in the power of the Holy Spirit. So if you're going through a wilderness experience right now, I encourage you, 
Don't escape from it. Don't try and get out of it. But win in the situation and you will be surprised of the power that will come upon you after you've come through that wilderness experience. The Bible says he, after that he went into the synagogue. And I want you to imagine yourself seeing this. Here is Jesus opening the Bible to Isaiah and immediately he sees the reading of today was pointing to himself. Here he is for, the, for reading the Scriptures. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I wonder what went through the mind of Jesus when he thought of this. As he read this, the, suddenly he realised the reading for the day was the fact it was speaking. In fact, it was prophesied 800 years before Jesus came to this earth. And he read this scripture, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Wow. What went through the mind of Jesus? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, if Jesus was totally dependent on the Holy Spirit, how much more? Should you and I? How much more should you and I? The sinless Son of God still dependent, dependent on the Holy Spirit for guidance, for direction, for leading, for revealing, for showing Him the heart of the Father. How much more should you and I? Who is the Holy Spirit? You know, many people, unfortunately, even today, and unfortunately, even in Pentecostal circles, are still ignorant of the person of the Holy Spirit. Like the Christians that Paul found at Ephesus in the book of Acts chapter 19. They lacked the understanding, and because of that, they didn't understand the joy and the power that they can flow into by not knowing who the person of the Holy Spirit was. You see, church, it's vital that every one of us get to know the Holy Spirit. It is so crucial in this day and age that we get to know the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's a person even though He doesn't have a physical body. He is a person and He has personality. He's not just an influence or a force like magnetism or electricity. Jesus always spoke of the Holy Spirit as Him, not as it, as Him. He, person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person because He communicates the person to us, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. I'm so grateful to the Holy Spirit for communicating and opening our understanding to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He brings us to an understanding at the deepest level of the personality of who Jesus really is. He acts in a way a person acts. For example, he has a mind and he knows. He has a will, he may be resisted. He loves and he may be grieved. He speaks and he may be spoken to. He guides, teaches, encourages, reveals, witnesses and intercedes for us. He is right now seated at the right hand of God, interceding for you and I. And if you want to know what he's praying for, have a look at the Paul, Paul's the prayers. I believe that's what the prayers that he's praying for you and I. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know the hope of your calling and what the glorious riches of the inheritance and the saints in light and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us would. I pray that your heart will be flooded with light. That's what he's praying for. That's what he's praying for. I pray that you'll be strengthened with might in your inner man. Jesus is praying that an inner man be strengthened with might. I want my inner man to be strengthened. My inner man is not often strengthened at, at times, is not strengthened. So I need to pray, God, I pray in Jesus' name. I agree with the Father. I agree with Jesus. I agree with the Holy Spirit that my spirit will be strengthened on the inner man. Hallelujah. Praise God. A great writer by the name of R.A. Torrey made this comment. He said, It is of the highest importance from the standpoint of worship 
that we decide whether the Holy Spirit is a divine person worthy to receive our adoration, our faith, our love and an entire surrender to Himself or whether it is simply an influence emanating from God or a power or illumination that God imparts to us. If the Holy Spirit is a person and a divine person and we do not know Him as such, then we are robbing a divine being of the worship and the faith and the love and the surrender to Himself, which are His due. It is of the highest importance from the standpoint of experience that we know the Holy Spirit as a person, just as real as Jesus Christ Himself, an ever-present loving friend, our mighty helper, who is not only, is only always by our side, but dwells in their hearts every day and every hour, and who is ready to undertake for them in every emergency of life. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Wonderful Spirit of God. Wonderful Spirit of God. You know, Jesus said in John 14, verses 16 to 18, And I will pray to the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him. And He will be with you, and in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. I will come to you in a different way. I will come to you through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, exactly like me, Jesus said, no difference at all. The Holy Spirit has the qualities, every quality that Jesus Christ had. In essence, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever through the person of the Holy Spirit. That's why, church, we have to know Him, spend time with Him, ask Him to reveal things to us. The Holy Spirit has all the qualities of Jesus Christ. You see, in the Old Testament, for 4,000 years, God the Father was in the forefront. In the shadow was the Holy Spirit and Jesus. When Jesus was on earth, Jesus was in the forefront in the shadow was the Father and the Holy Spirit. For over 2,000 years after Pentecost, the Holy Spirit now is in the forefront. Jesus and the Father in the, in the shadow of the Holy Spirit. We are living in the day of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't go, call God your Father. You can't call Jesus Lord. Because it's only through the Holy Spirit that you and I can approach God and approach Jesus Christ. And the Spirit of the Lord, church, is the Spirit in action. We have a Spirit. This Holy Spirit is the Spirit of action. And if we don't recognise Him or recognise Him or depend on Him, then you can have all the knowledge about God, but you won't really possess anything in practical experience. You know, your ministry can grow. Your ministry can develop. Your walk in God to develop. To develop. Your understanding of the Word and, uh, of God can grow immensely. Your insights, the things that, you can, uh, that the Holy Spirit can reveal to you is you, if you have a definite relationship of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. As you spend time with Him, He starts to reveal to you. Not long after I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, God gave me my first, the Holy Spirit gave me my first revelation about the workings of the Holy Spirit in my life. And when you are open to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to speak to your life and spend time in relationship with Him, He longs, church, He longs to reveal to you something about the Father, something about Jesus, something about the Word of God, opening your understanding, giving you illumination, giving you revelation of the truth of the Word of God. Listen to what Jesus said in the book of John concerning the Holy Spirit in chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father and He will give you another helper that He may abide with you forever. He doesn't leave. He abides with us forever. In John 14, verse 26, But the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things. There you go. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. 
In chapter 15, verse 26, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, He will testify of me. In chapter 16, verse 17, 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage. Can you imagine standing there in front of your disciples? Jesus is about to go, go to the cross and then go back to heaven. And he says to the disciples, listen, it's to your advantage that I go away. But Jesus, we've been with you for three years. We've spent time with you. We've seen miracles performed. We've seen the way you've talked to people. We see the way you preach to people. We see the way you, you open up scriptures to us. How can you say that? But Jesus said, if I don't go away, I cannot send the Holy Spirit to you. When he comes, he will reveal to you all truth. He said, if I depart, I will send him to you. You see, the word helper means one called alongside to help. Someone to stand by you as your friend. But the word helper doesn't mean someone just coming alongside you and saying, listen, I understand what you're going through. Yeah, I know it's tough. And look, I understand the problems that you're facing right now. No, no way. The word helper is from the Latin word fortis. And it means brave. The Holy Spirit wants to make us brave in the midst of storms, in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of insurmountable problems or challenges that may come our way. He will cause you to stand strong and be brave. Whatever the enemy wants to do against you, he will cause you to be brave. He stands alongside you and infuses divine strength in you and then says to you, you can do it. That challenge is not as difficult as you think it is. You can do it. I will stand here with you and give you fortis. I will give you bravery. I'll give you strength. I'll infuse in you divine strength. You know, it's interesting. Reading uh, the book of Psalms, chapter, uh, uh, chapter 105, verses 18. 17 and 18, concerning um, Joseph, what the Bible said about Joseph. It said these words here, He sent a man before them, Joseph, into Egypt, uh, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in iron. What does that mean? Well, fortunately, you can go to the Hebrew to find out exactly what it means. What it means there. He put his soul into the iron. Well, say, what does that mean? Your soul is your mind, will, and your emotions. So through the trials, the tribulations that Joseph went through, God caused his soul, his mind, will, and emotions to be so ingrained with iron that he could face any problem, any situation. And what the Holy Spirit is wanting to do to us today, he wants to cause our soul, our mind, our will and emotions to enter into the iron. Why? Because he wants our mind, our thoughts to be strong. Not vacillate. He wants our emotions not to swing this way and that way, but to stand strong and true. He causes our mind and emotions to be strong, our soul into iron and our will, our decisions so that we make right decisions, godly decisions, wise decisions. So when you're going through difficult times, what's happening there is the Holy Spirit is causing your soul to enter into the iron to strengthen you. You may feel right now that, God, I don't feel as if I'm being strengthened. I don't feel if things are really happening in my life. But you see, the Holy Spirit gives us strength and courage to meet the demands of life. You know, Olive shared a story with us once. After the service, she went to um, McDonald's with her friends. I don't know why McDonald's, but anyway. McDonald's with their friends, with this couple. 
and the uh, the friend's uh, husband uh, went to went in and got the drinks. And Olive was, uh, I, th- I think she was sitting in the back seat. And this guy opened the door and he came up to her and he put his hand against her throat. He said, give me money, give me money. And Olive was shaking. She said, I haven't got any, I haven't got any. She was so terrified. He pressed his hands even tighter and he said, give me money or someone will get hurt. And this is what Olive said. She said, something rose up in me. Something rose up in me. And she said these words. You are right. Someone will get hurt. But in the name of Jesus Christ, it won't be me. (laughs) Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, it won't be me. And again, he said, I want money, money, money. And when Olive said, by the blood of Jesus, he stepped out and ran away. Even though she was shaking, the Holy Spirit infused in her fortress, caused her to be brave even though her body may not have been feeling brave. But her spirit, the inner man, strengthened with might in her inner man. She faced that encounter. God gave her boldness to speak the name of Jesus. Boldness to declare the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on, let's give the Lord a clap offering. You see, God wants us as spirit and spirit-led Christians to be winners in every situation. He wants us to be winners in this life. It doesn't give Him pleasure to see us losing all the time. He wants us to be winners in our walk with Him. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 4, And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. God is, hold, the Holy Spirit is raising up a demonstration generation, a generation that knows how to demonstrate the power of the Holy Ghost. And I thank God that God is raising up in Gateway Church, young and old, Men and women that are saying, God, I know this more. I know there's a greater level of authority and power and anointing. And I want to be one of those people that know how to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. A demonstration generation to fulfill the Great Commission. A demonstration generation to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. A demonstration generation to speak His Word with all boldness. A demonstration generation to loose those that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. In Acts 2, 43, it says, Then fear came upon every soul and many signs and wonders were done through the apostles. Miracles, healings, deliverances, gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are the mighty acts of God that make the preaching of His Word effective. To win this nation to Jesus, church, we need the demonstration and power of the Holy Spirit to be activated in the hearts and lives of His people. Remember a guy come up to me And he was so angry. And he grabbed me around the throat. He said, I've got a black belt. I said, mine's brown. Anyway, (laughs) no, I didn't say that. (laughs) He said, I've got a black belt. He said, I'm going to choke you. You know what you do when you're faced with something like that? Don't pull back. Get closer. Get closer. So I got closer. I put my hand, my face there right now. Looked right into his eye. I said, in the name of Jesus, come out. 
I think, church, don't be surprised if we start to see some deliverances. Yes. Don't be surprised. When that happens, the kingdom of God has come among you. Exciting days. Exciting days. Ah, exciting days. Come out. They actually stink. They smell. In the name of Jesus. You see, if we're going to see the vision of Gateway Church fulfilled, and that is God's purpose, we need the demonstration of the Spirit's power. The foundation of our nation, Australia, has been increasingly under attack to move away from the principles of God's Word. What's it going to take? A powerful move of God in the hearts of God's people. Don't wait for it to happen in some other church. Believe for it to happen now in your life, in my life. In 1 Thessalonians 1.5, our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. Another translation brings it like this. Our gospel came to you not simply with words. Do you just want to hear people just preach and nothing happens? You'd be amazed what happens at this altar call Sunday after Sunday. Yes, we may not see people and deliverance as yet and miracle signs and wonders to the degree we want to. But things are happening. Words of knowledge, prophetic words have been given. Words of wisdom. Impartation is taking place. That's why next Sunday night is so crucial for us to come along so that the, that the, the anointing is imparted by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that verse goes on to say, our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction. Deep conviction. We need more than our words. We need to see the powerful moving of God's Holy Spirit. The world needs to see the church move in power. The world is waiting to see the demonstration and the power of the Holy Ghost. In three verses, three places in the Old, Old Testament shows very strongly what happens when someone comes under the power of the Holy Spirit. In Judges 6, verse 33 to 34, Then all the Midianites and Amalekites, the people of the east, gathered together and they crossed over and camped in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Then he blew the trumpet and the Bezites gathered behind him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. In the Hebrew language, this is how it goes. The Spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon with himself and took possession of him. Do you want to be clothed with the, the Spirit of God that He takes possession of us? You know, often if I was to ask the question, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? I'm sure we would all say, yes. I speak in tongues. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. The word to be filled with the Holy Spirit means to come under the control. There's a difference. Under the control of the Holy Spirit. Many enemies in our day have joined forces against the Lord and His church. Anti-family, anti-church, anti-marriage, anti-morality, anti-anti, you name it. That's why we need Gideons today to rise up where the Spirit of God can clothe the Gideons in our church and take possession of them. The second passage in the Old Testament, Judges chapter 11, chapter 14, verses 5 to 6. So Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother and came to the vineyards of Timnah. Now to his surprise, a young lion came roaring against him. I think I'd be surprised too. 
And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he tore the lion apart as one would tear apart a young goat, though he had nothing in his hand. He tore the lion apart with his bare hands. Just imagine a lion coming towards you and you're grabbing. God is raising up men and women today to tear down the demonic forces not with their hands, but with their words. In the name of Jesus, you can do it. Hallelujah. We need the Samsons of the day to tear lions. How did Samson do that? The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Jesus himself said in Matthew 12, verse 28, But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. The third illustration in the, New, in the, Old, Covenant, in the Old Testament. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 6 and 10. The prophet Samuel said this to Saul, The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you in power. And you will prophesy with them and you will be changed into a different person. When they arrived at Gibeah, a possession of prophets met him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him in power and he joined them in prophesying. He was changed. Do you want to be changed? I want to be changed. I want to be changed. Changed from glory to glory. Changed with a greater level of anointing and power. Changed with a greater level of authority that we can have in Jesus. You see, that happens through the moving of the Holy Spirit coming upon Him. When the Spirit of God changes you in a different person, you, it enables you to prophesy. It enables you to tear lines apart. It enables you with 300 men to conquer an entire army. You see, reaching our resistant nation will require the supernatural moving and power of the Holy Spirit in us. We have some hostile Midianites out there, church. We have some lines that God wants us to tear apart. We have churches full of souls needing to be changed into a different person. You see, in one moment, in one moment, everything can be different. In one moment, the Holy Spirit can move upon you in power. In one moment, you can say to the crippled man, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. In one moment, as you are confronted by a line, a demonic spirit in a person, you can say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to get out in one moment. So what must we do? Stay close to God. Surrender completely to the Holy Spirit. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Spend time in talking and walking with Him. Appreciate Him. Tell Him how much you love Him. Every time I preach or share the Word or do something for God's kingdom, in my moment of quietness, I just have a little talk. Holy Spirit, thank you. Together we are able to achieve. Even though I may not have felt I went as well. God, I thank you for the privilege of sharing the Word of God. You inspired these men to write these words and I had the privilege of quoting them. R.A. Torrey again. He said, the Holy Spirit's like the wind. You don't know where He's coming from or where He's going. You cannot oppose the wind, hide from the wind. You can't live without the wind. You cannot conduct it, control it or command it. You cannot tell the wind where to go. Without it, you would die. 
You never know when it will turn and go into another direction. He said, the only thing you can do to the wind and with the wind, and if you will, it will carry you. He said, all you have to do is spread your wings and the wind will carry you where it's going. Church, all we have to do is spread our spiritual wings and allow the Holy Spirit to lift us up and carry us in His direction where He wants us to go. The Holy Spirit said, if my people will do this, I'll carry them higher than they've gone before. Catherine Kuhlman, one of her services, she stopped during that service and she said, not a sound, not a sound. A man sitting in the front was saying, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Catherine looked up and said, sir, I said, not a sound. And in that stillness and silence, she waited. And suddenly, crash, bang, a woman gets up, screams out, I can see, I can see. And Catherine Kuhlman made this comment. She said, oh, if I can only, if only I can cooperate with the Holy Spirit. If only I can cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Everything that you and I do is through the mighty Holy Spirit. I finish with this. I believe that one of the biggest reasons that the body of Christ has, hasn't made a greater impact on our generation today is because of our failure to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Without a doubt, Jesus and the disciples, every time they spoke the word, it was confirmed. Signs and wonders confirmed the word. We are seeing moments of it, parts of it, but there is coming a day and I pray this day will be the beginning of it to a greater measure where we'll see signs and wonders in ways we have never seen before. Lives are changed. Bodies are healed. Minds are restored. One of the most important things, steps in flowing in the gifts of the Spirit is to earnestly desire. Earnestly desire. Church, I, I beg you, I beg you. Let's not go through our Christian life and think, well, I'll just wait at the rapture bus stop until Jesus comes. Let's be people that's going to make a difference in our nation, in our city, in our state. Let's be people that desire earnestly spiritual gifts. They are the tools of the trade. God wants us to operate. They are given there as the Holy Spirit wills, but He will not will unless we desire earnestly. And it's not saying, saying Holy Spirit, listen, uh, do you mind if you give me a gift? Lord, I've got some people I need to pray for. I just need to know. No, no, no. In the times when you just spend alone with Him, God, I pray. Daily, God, I want to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Desire spiritual gifts. You see, it's important to understand that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are always flowing. God doesn't turn them on and off. We're the ones that are off and on. The Lord is always ready to flow through us in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Whenever our position, when we position ourselves to be His channel, the gifts will flow.